wanted to hop on really quick to tell y'all that last night I cooked the best curry chicken, okay? Um, usually like on my Instagram, I'm always like cooking and snapping and like recording as I'm cooking or whatever. Um, but yesterday I was like, you know what, let me just record the whole process and see if it makes good video content. Um, so I did. Uh, so this is the video. You guys let me know what you think. Like if you tried a recipe, let me know how it turned out. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that. Um, yeah, thank you. I decided to do my cabbage first. So the cabbage that I make, I usually use um, one or two heads of cabbage, just depending on how I feel. Um, one yellow onion if I have two heads of cabbage, and if I only have one, then I'll use a half of the yellow onion. And then I'll use some carrots. And I only had baby carrots this time around, but they worked well for me. So with the cabbage, I usually cut it in half and then cut it in quarters and then I'll slice each quarter up into like one inch pieces. And what I did here was I rinsed them off initially and then I'm putting them in that um, metal pan so that once I have it all um, chopped up, then I can go ahead and rinse it off again. I chopped my onion and I had a pretty big yellow onion as you can see here so I went ahead and started to chop this one up um, I kind of had a hard time getting it all peeled so I think I either fast forwarded it yeah I sped through because it took me forever to peel the onion but basically once it was finally peeled I went ahead and chopped it up into small little slices got my pot ready so I use like a really really big um, soup pot because as you guys know like cabbage of course you have to put it all in but then it's going to cook down but I just needed a pot big enough to put it all in um, so I started off on high heat and then I go ahead and put my olive oil in there um, any brand I was just showing what I use but I put enough olive oil just to kind of get the bottom of the pan um, oiled up and then I add a little bit of minced garlic and then I go ahead and start putting my chopped veggie or excuse me, my chopped onions in there. Um, and I know it seems like a lot of onions, but for me, I like the flavor. Um, if it seems like too much to you, then just go ahead and use a half an onion. So after about two or three minutes when the onions are caramelized and you can start to smell them in the kitchen and it's smelling good in there, it's time to add the cabbage. So what I do is kind of um, take my time and I add like a handful or two at a time and then I kind of stir it up and kind of mix it in with the onions and I also break up the little clumps as you can see because I don't like having like really huge clumps of cabbage like in my um, pot. After I get a good amount of the cabbage in the pot, then I go ahead and start to season my cabbage. So as you can see, I start off with some seasoning salt. And unfortunately guys, I'm sorry I don't measure. I just kind of go off of what feels right and I'll taste it and kind of go from there. But then I'll also use some fresh ground black pepper that I got from a market when I was still in Chicago, which I really miss and I want to find a market like that. But either way. Um, after the pepper, I think, yeah, then I go ahead and add some of the crushed red pepper flakes. I know that then you can see what it said, but that's crushed red pepper. And I try not to use too much of that, but I love spicy foods, so I put a generous amount in there. And then I'll put some of the carrots, but not all. And go ahead and just mix that all together. And then I just kind of keep doing that and repeating, like I say, I, more so because I want flavor on all the cabbage. So I put a couple handfuls of the cabbage and then I'll follow through with the seasoning and then kind of mix it up. So next I'm adding water. I think that is equivalent to like two cups of water. And then this is chicken bouillon. So 
the reason I use that is because um, usually I would use chicken stock but since I don't have any that's why I put the water in there and then I follow it up with the chicken bouillon and then I go ahead and just stir it all up together and after I get it like really stirred up and mixed well like the onion spread and the carrot spread then I go ahead and just put a top on it and then I put it on a low temperature to simmer and I actually let it simmer for about an hour and a half if not two depending on how tender you want your cabbage so now it is time to make the curry um, so before I do the chicken I went ahead and started chopping up my veggies so I use one potato, sometimes I use two, um, I guess it just depends, but this time around I just use one. Um, and then I'm also going to chop up some carrots to go in there as well. So next it is time for the chicken. So as you can see, I've already like cleaned my chicken. I took the skin off, I took as much of the fat off as possible, and I have it sitting in a mixture of water and vinegar um, just to get it all clean. So when I'm ready to start cooking with it, then I go ahead and start to chop it. I chopped mine in, so I had chicken thighs and I chopped them into three pieces each, I believe. Next, it is time to season the chicken. So first I'm using, I think that was black pepper. And then I put some seasoning salt on there. And then a little bit of garlic powder. And then some celery salt, uh, which I just recently started using, but I like it. And don't be afraid to get your hands in there and really mix it in because I remember I used to hate touching chicken meat really but um, no not so much but then I went ahead and started to add the curry so I did use a spoon to add the curry because the color will really like change your nails and I don't like that so after my chicken marinated then I went ahead and started my pot so I put it on I think like medium heat and then I go ahead and coat the bottom with olive oil. Again, just enough to kind of get the bottom thoroughly coated so that I can start to put my chicken pieces in there. And I'm not, my plan isn't to like cook them all the way through right here. I just want to brown them. So I'm gonna just put all the pieces in and let them fry. I usually do like two minutes at a time and then I'll flip it and cook it for another two minutes and then I take them out and set them to the side. So after about two minutes, you wanna go ahead and flip the chicken. Um, it doesn't have to be like super dark or anything. Really, we're just trying to get a nice coating on there. Um, so yeah, I go ahead and just flip all the pieces and then I let them cook for another two minutes on the other side. And after that, like I said, I take them out, put them to the side, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and cook the second batch. And the chicken is definitely looking good. It smells so good. Oh my God, when you guys are cooking this, you're gonna get the smell of like all the spices and the curry in the house. Um, a little bit of the smell of like the cabbage still cooking. So right now your kitchen has got to be lit. So once the second batch of chicken is done, you're gonna go ahead and take that out and just put it on top of the first batch because now we are going to cook um, onions. I don't know if I showed me chopping up onions, but um, in addition to the carrots and the potatoes, we also chopped up just a half an onion and they're chopped really big. So not like they were for the cabbage, but it had pretty big chunks here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cook that in the grease uh, or the oil that I use to cook the chicken in. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of curry powder on top of that because we really wanna get that curry flavor all in this dish. So once the onions are all caramelized and cooked, maybe like two minutes later, 
I go ahead and put my chicken back into the pot and right now you guys it is smelling so good in my kitchen like I wish that I knew how to describe it but um, if you're cooking this along with me then you know when maybe if you're gonna cook it later you will soon find out this house is smelling good but I go ahead and add my chicken and then I want to stir it up so I can kind of get the onions all spread around in there um, but and then also I'm going to go ahead and add my veggie so I put all my carrots in stir, or excuse me stir that up and then I'm also going to go ahead and put my potatoes in and as you can see it's like it's really coming together it's looking good it's smelling good and I just cannot wait for it to be done some water um, you want enough water to cover your um, to like cover the vegetables for sure because you want to make sure that those cook all the way through and so I think I use two of those big cups that I have which is kind of equivalent to like four cups of water but it really just depends on how much you have in the pot the size of your pot you basically just want to cover everything um, or get enough for it to be submerged but you want to be careful with the water because the water can really pull away from your flavor. So you want to make sure that um, you're tasting as you cook. Um, I think I added more curry powder at this point or if I didn't, I let it cook for a little bit longer. And then I added more curry and like celery salt just to taste. So it just depends on as you're cooking, you have to taste it and see how it is to you and add like a little bit more here and there. So shortly after I closed the top of the pot, I forgot that I needed to put a bay leaf in there and we did not have any. Um, so this has been cooking for about 30 minutes I, while I went to the store to go grab the bay leaves. And this is how it's looking so far. If you can see like the little rim that's showing you that it's cooking down and that's exactly what I want because I really don't like my curry like super runny. Like I like to have some juice with it, but I don't want it super runny. I like it to be a little thick. And so that's why I cook it as long as I do um, so that it can cook down. And if I haven't mentioned, I probably let it cook for about um, two hours, about the same amount of time as I let my, my cabbage cook. And as you can see here, I'm, I'm adding more curry. I think you'll see me go ahead and add some more of the celery salt. And again, because I want to get that flavor and that water really does kind of um, take a lot of that flavor away. But if you marinate your meat longer, then the water won't pull as much flavor away. So you just kind of have to be aware of, of your food. And like I say, taste your food as it's cooking. for about an hour and a half maybe an hour and 45 minutes it's cooking down pretty well if I wanted to I can cook it longer just so that some of that juice cooks down a little bit more but um, I, I don't think I, I did I ended up starting my rice if you can see at the top of the screen my rice is kind of cooking over on the side so I let my curry cook just enough time until my rice was done but look at it oh my gosh guys it is good to go so I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish cooking, let my rice finish, and then I will come back with the food on the plate and you guys let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this, please by all means comment, like, just let me know and I'll do more. I cook every day, every other day, so there'll be plenty of content.